today uh, we are going to discuss a very important topic that is the difference between Crohn's disease and intestinal tuberculosis. Now, why this uh, topic is important? Because it, sometimes the clinical features and findings between intestinal and uh, TB and Crohn's disease overlap, making the diagnosis, exact diagnosis, very difficult. Okay, so that is why we need to understand the difference, basic differences between Crohn's and intestinal TB. So first, let us see what are the things which actually overlaps between Crohn's and intestinal TB. The patient presents with almost the same clini uh, features, clinical features, the same. Like in Crohn's also, the patient will have fever due to the inflammation. There'll be fatigue, weight loss. There'll be abdominal pain, colicky abdominal pain. Uh, there'll be all signs and symptoms of malabsorption. Why? Because as I had told you, when we had discussed the lecture on uh, Crohn's disease, when I had told you there that those inflamed areas of the intestine usually the absorption from those areas is hampered that causes malabsorption in intestinal tb also the patient will have fever the patient will have malaise fatigue weight loss anemia and there will be colicky abdominal pain in both these cases the patient suffers from diarrhea clear what else when you palpate the abdomen there are chances in both the cases you can find a mass in the abdomen why in Crohn's disease i had told you it can be due, uh, because the you know the inflamed loops of the intestine they get adherent intestinal tb it can be because uh, you know the different uh, uh, as i had told you it is because of the lymph nodes isn't it the enlargement of the lymph nodes that can cause uh, that can give a, uh, a mass you know you can when you palpate the abdomen you can uh, feel you know, as if there is a mass in the abdomen because of these uh, enlarged lymph nodes. So in both the cases, again, this, uh, uh, this can be a possibility, right? So what happens uh, in these cases? Now, how to differentiate? How will we difference between, how will we differentiate between Crohn's disease and intestinal tuberculosis? So first, let us see the clinical, the clinical features, what differentiating features can we get? Remember, Crohn's disease, this is a chronic disease, okay? So chronic disease, obviously the duration of symptoms, the duration of symptoms in Crohn's disease will be long-standing. The patient will say, no, I'm having these symptoms for a long time. Whereas in case of intestinal TB, the patient will say, no, I have just developed these symptoms recently. Right? What else? Fever. Fever, although it is common in both, but since it's an infectious cause, here the fever is more common. Here fever is less common, right? Again, diarrhea. Diarrhea, again, as I told you, it is common in both, both uh, patients, you know, they complain of diarrhea. But Crohn's disease, it is, again, diarrhea is more common. Intestinal TB, diarrhea is less common. Okay, talking about the anal lesions, lesions around the anus. This is again more common in case of Crohn's. Okay, so remember the perianal fistula lesions around the anus. This is again more common in case of Crohn's. It is less uh, common in case of intestinal tuberculosis. Okay, this is about the clinical features. Next, let us talk about the radiological features. In radiological fe features, uh, which area is more commonly involved in case of the intestinal TB? This we have already discussed, intestinal TB and Crohn's. Which area is involved most common in, commonly in case of intestinal TB? Remember, it's a cecum. The cecal involvement here is more common. And in this case, it is the ileal involvement. The ileal involvement is more common. Okay. And uh, here in intestinal TB, usually a shorter segment of the intestine is involved. Here, a longer segment of the intestine is involved. Okay, so talking about the skip lesions, skip lesions is very common, as I told you, okay, so there are the areas of inflammation, in between there are the normal, uh, you know, there are small normal islands of normal tissue. So this is a most more common in case of the Crohn's disease. In Crohn's disease, you will find the areas of inflammation and in between you will find the skip lesions, okay, skip lesions. But in intestinal TB, skip lesions, okay, so they are uncommon. Again, the formation of fistula. Fistula common is very common. Fistula formation is very common in case of Crohn's. Whereas fistula formation, this is again uncommon in case of the intestinal tuberculosis. Clear? <clears throat> 
Okay. Then talking about ascites. Remember ascites, this is very common in case of intestinal tuberculosis. Intestinal tuberculosis patients often present with ascites, but ascites it is less common. Or you can say it is uncommon in case of Crohn's disease. Right? Then talking about the ulcer, when you do endoscopic examination, when you see the ulcer, so what is the nature of, in both the patients, in both the cases, you will have ulcers, intestinal TB as well as in case of Crohn's. In intestinal tuberculosis, the ulcers are transverse. Transverse ulcers. In Crohn's disease, the ulcers are longitudinal ulcers. This you can see by endoscopy. Remember, so this you can see it by endoscopy. And what else? I had told you about the granuloma formation. Remember, see granulomas you will find both in case of intestinal tuberculosis as well as in case of Crohn's. In intestinal tuberculosis, remember there is caseation. I have already discussed with you all that in case of Crohn's, the uh, granulomas are non caseating. Here, yeah, there is non caseating granulomas, whereas in intestinal tuberculosis, there are caseation and necrosis granulomas. Okay, so these are the main differences between your intestinal tuberculosis and Crohn's.